Sludge by Spooky Boo. I don't know how long I've been sitting here. I can't tell you how many days it has been since I've seen daylight, or how many nights it has been since I've slept. I suppose Alexa could tell me, but why bother? I can't leave here anyway. It's too late. It all started because of this damn kitchen sink. Every few months it would back up and slowly drain. Sometimes the water would take hours to disappear, and other times just a few minutes. It was never the same. I first tried Drano, but that didn't work. The first time I poured the liquid down the drain, the floor seemed to shake. I thought we were having an earthquake, but when I checked the USGS quake map, nothing was showing for Northern California at all. Then I tried foam Drano, you know, the kind that they call a snake. It foams in the pipe and expands into the gunk, but the skunk didn't want to budge. The day I used it, I swear I thought I heard the pipes moaning. Something else I attributed to natural causes, this time the weather. It had been hot and cold and cold and hot for days, which can mean moaning pipes. What little did I know? I poked and prodded items into the kitchen sink. From small plastic snakes to coat hangers, I would push and prod. Sometimes a little bit of smelly goo would come up on the end of the augers, but most of the time it was just clean. Then I called a plumber who brought over a 50-foot electric auger. He unscrewed the pipes in the house and pushed the auger into the long black drain pipe until it could go no further then pressed a button and we watched it spin out of the depths of the sewer pipes. Nothing. Not even a hair. He shrugged, went back to his truck and came back with a hose with the bladder on it. After three tries it was clear. Whatever was in there must have been shoved back into the sewers where it belonged. The sink hadn't worked like this for years. All of the water was draining so fast that I just kept turning the faucet on and off to make sure it was actually really happening. I realized that I could finally use my dishwasher, and out of sheer excitement, I ran over to open it up. With a tug, the dishwasher door popped open, and I almost lost my lunch. The smell. Oh my god, the smell. The most toxic, smelly mold and mildew mixed with old meat and vegetables that one could only find at a dump permeated my senses so fast. I felt my stomach heave involuntarily as I retched and turned away. Without looking, I closed the door, figuring that I could just put a bleach bomb in there overnight. Whatever was baking in my dishwasher during the 105 degree heat wave would have to wait. I made sure the door clicked, then turned off the light and went to bed. It was around 2 a.m. when I heard the crash of dishes in the kitchen. I rubbed my eyes and rolled out of bed, stepping my toe against the footboard. Cursing, I limped into the kitchen to see what was going on. When I flipped the light switch on, I noticed something moving in the sink. At first I thought it was a rat, but then it slithered back into the drain. I peered into the left side of my white porcelain sink and realized that nothing that big could have passed through the stainless steel drain. Perhaps a very small snake, but it looked a hell of a lot bigger than a snake. As I looked down into the drain, I could see something green, almost black, moving into the garbage disposal tube. As I plugged my nose, I looked a little closer and watched as its body inched its way into the disposal. Suddenly, a squirt of goo splashed into my eye. I screamed as it burned into my eyeball. I turned on the water and started splashing water into my face and eye socket as I reached over and turned the disposal to kill the wretched thing. It screeched like a wounded cat as pieces of its body flew out of the disposal onto the sink. The creature slithered back into the drain or from wherever it came from. I watched with my one good eye as the little green pieces that landed on the counter worked their way toward each other and connected again to create a whole new worm. 
From the knife drawer I pulled out a wood meat tenderizer and smashed it a few times, while ignoring the cracks made into the countertop. The thing wouldn't die, so I poured bleach on it. The color changed to a greenish-yellow puke, and then back to the dark green as they pulled together in one mass again, this time bigger. It slithered to the hole again, faster than I could smash it with the mallet. Its body separated into the little holes of the drain, and then back into one as it slithered its way back down the pipe. What the hell are you? I yelled into the pipe. I put the sink stoppers in both sides, not even being sure if it could stop the nasty green goo. I filled up both sides with water to make double sure there was weight upon the stoppers. For good measure, I tossed in some bleach into the water as well, then waited. Nothing. Not even a bubble. Finally able to rest for a bit, I sat down at my laptop and searched every search engine I could possibly think of to find whatever creature that might be. A slug? A worm? Nothing resembled the sewer slug at all. The closest I could find was the blob, but that was a fictional movie. There was no way it was the blob. I could have posted it to Facebook and made a viral post, but I'm sure people wouldn't believe it and I was too scared to run and grab my phone while it was out of control. What if it had dropped to the floor and climbed up my leg, then entered my nose, looking for a warm place to find a brain to eat? I had now been up almost all night trying to figure out what that thing was, and I needed more sleep before getting up for work. Tired, I finally decided that I would try to get a few more hours before the sun came up. The dirt and grease from playing with the sink disappeared in the suds almost instantly while washing my hands. After, I plugged up both bathroom sink drains and filled the sinks with water. Checking the kitchen sink as well, I found both sides of the sink the way I had left them. I sighed with relief and retired to bed. The blankets were warm and comfortable and provided a nice security to rest my soul. A welcome relief after a crazy night, except for a few minutes later, the pipes under the house began to gurgle and rumble while shaking the house. I ran out of the room as pictures and dishes were smashing on the ground. It was so crazy. The whole house was shaking like we were having an earthquake. As soon as it stopped, I looked outside and everyone else was still asleep. A little nervous, I went into the kitchen to see if the sink was still full of water. All was well, and in the bathroom too. Thinking maybe a hot shower might help relax me, I ran the water as hot as I could and stepped inside the steam. It felt good as the water massaged my neck and back. I lathered up, hoping to wash away the thought of the slimy creature when my feet started to burn. At first it felt like the pins and needles you get when your legs would just wake up. But after a minute, my feet felt like they were on fire. I looked down, and to my horror, I noticed the sludge coming up through the drain in the shower. The sloppy, blackish mess oozed around my feet and between my toes. I cried out in pain while I fell through the frosted glass shower door and onto the hard floor. I looked down, thinking I must have cut myself on the glass. There was blood everywhere. Pushing myself up and feeling the shards rip through my fingers and palm, I stood and hobbled across the floor, grabbing my towel on the way out. Sitting on my bed, I started to pull shards of glass from my feet and tend to the cut in my leg. It had stopped bleeding by then, but I could see that it was still all over the bathroom floor. My feet were red and blistered as if I had walked across hot coals. I reluctantly shoved my feet into my slippers while screaming in pain as the soles of my feet ached. Limping, I went into the bathroom to wet some washcloths and grab some band-aids when I noticed the creature had produced a small tube of its own, dark green flesh from its mouth. It was slurping and licking up my blood from the floor. Horrified, I let out a yelp and managed to grab some gauze and wash rags from the cabinet then painfully ran back into my room, shutting the door behind me. I stuffed the towel under the door, thinking this might stop the creature from getting through. As I wiped down my burning feet and wrapped them in gauze, I realized I was wrong. 
That thing was moving the towel from underneath the door, pushing it forward with that tube-like tongue. It moved so fast toward my bare foot that I could barely get away. I kicked at it with my other gauze-covered foot as its mouthpiece started to bore into the wound on my foot. I screamed in agony, kicking it across the room and slipping my foot into the other shoe. It hurt. Damn, did it hurt bad. Blood was dripping from where its mouth tube cut into my skin and making a trail on the floor. That damn thing followed the trail like a slimy hound dog. I limped to the front door, not sure how far behind me the sledge was, but as soon as I opened it, something wrapped around my ankle, pulling me back into the living room. The heavy door closed on its own, and no one could hear me scream. It was suddenly upon my legs, working its way up my hips and torso. Its body touching my skin felt like acid burning seven layers down. What do you want? I cried out, thinking that it might understand me. Your body. It hissed and continued its way up to my face, covering my nose and mouth and slithering its way inside. I awoke hours later. My body ached all over. It burned inside and out, and there was something inhuman invading my brain. I could feel it probing my thoughts and soul. The sun was rising over the valley, and as it shone through the window and onto my skin, I ached deep inside my bones. That thing was inside of me. Everything was a green hue. Nothing looked normal. I painfully pulled myself along the wall to the bathroom and I cried in horror at my face. A mix of blood, blistered skin, and the slime from the slug-like being. It spoke to me in my head without words, soothed my soul. Perhaps it used a drug that it created. I felt calm, empowered, and I was very, very hungry. The doorbell rang, and it cooed at me from inside my mind. Eat. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. You know, on Saturday nights, I get to sit by a nice roaring fire with a big bowl of buttery popcorn and a fizzy soda. I pop my legs on the leathery stool in front of me and turn on my favorite TV show, Creature Features. Why not? It's late, and those old scary movies are more fun than the latest slasher swinging his kitchen knife at some chick. While only the lucky can watch on TV in the San Francisco Bay Area, you can watch it on the web at www.creaturefeatures.tv. Check it out and watch it with me.